Hello, I'm James Green of Uber Solar, and I am delighted to be talking to you on this Zoom uh, webinar or this recording because I'm really passionate about solar and have been for many uh, years and even decades. Uh, and the purpose of this is to give you an introduction as to why there are good reasons for you to go renewable. Uh, and for that, we're going to use a number of different slides. In South Africa, it makes financial sense to go solar and it makes environmental sense and climate change sense. And most importantly, I believe we have a obligation to future generations. In terms of the government in South Africa, they remain in love with coal, which is one of the major uh, contributors to climate change and pollution. They are reluctant to hand over any power generation to the private sector, although they have done a little bit with the independent power producing programs in renewables. However, they haven't provided any renewable or energy efficient programs to consumers since 2014. And despite the political rhetoric, they seem to put environmental concerns and climate change commitments to the bottom of their priority list. So with homes in South Africa, there are approximately 2% of the homes with electric geysers, which is around 7 million. And only 150,000 of those have gone solar over the last 10 years. And less than half a percent have installed any form of solar PV. So the numbers are frankly pathetic, despite it making so much sense. So five years ago, uh, I posted, a number, well, I've done a number of talks over the years, but we were projecting the cost of electricity then after the huge increases which have come along since 2004. And we were projecting that the electricity prices would be almost exactly where we've got them in this graph uh, at around two round fifty today. And the reality, sadly, is that the prices are going to go up and up and up and up. And I, I'm not going to forecast where they're going to be, but certainly they're going to match inflation and probably considerably more. So the financial argument for solar water heating is that the investment cost for the purchase and to install it is from around 14,000 and the payback point is as short as 20 months up to three years. And water heating does represent around 35 to 60% of your monthly electricity bill. So if you look at the investment returns from solar water heating, they are typically between 500 and 1,000% over 10 years. I mean, just extraordinary investment returns. And that's because the price of ESCOM is going to go up and up and up. The life expectancy of a solar water heater, if it is maintained, will be in excess of 25 years. There's very little to go wrong. Some components may need uh, renewing or refurbishing after a period of time but the main part of the system will continue to operate. So in my opinion, solar water heating is a complete no brainer. I mean, it's just extraordinary to think that you could invest in anything which is going to give you these types of investment returns. Now, if we look at solar electric, solar PV, where you're generating electricity on your house, the investment cost is considerably more. It's between 80,000 and half a million. And your payback point for a grid tied system, which is probably four to six years, and for a hybrid system, which is using batteries about eight to 14 years. The investment returns, not so good as solar water heating, but they're still 500 to 1,000% over 20 years. And that's the difference. Rather than 10 years, it's 20 years. So the investment returns are still fantastic. It's just going to take longer. And again, the life expectancy is 25 years or more. So solar PV is a bit more of a puzzle. It requires 
a different number of factors to be brought into account. Load shedding, for example, may be something which is very important uh, to have your own electricity supply, although you can go down the UPS, the uninterrupted power supply route, and then add PV over a period of time. But the financial argument, if you look at it, is that everybody who has an electric geyser should have done solar water heating already, but they should definitely do it now if they haven't, and the majority haven't. And in terms of solar electric, it's a lifestyle choice. And of course, if you have the money. Now, turning to the environmental and climate change sides of going solar, um, it can get quite emotional. And what I want to start off with is to explain that every kilowatt hour of electricity that you use from ESCOM or your municipal supplier is putting out, pumping out one kilogram plus of carbon emissions. And in this graph, if you look, you've got a solar water heater basically at zero. You've got wind energy, which is a wind farm at 11 grams. You've got nuclear at 12. You've got a solar PV farm at 27. You've got 490 for gas. That's for things like the Mossel Bay peaking plants. And here on coal, which is the country, it's over a kilogram. Just unbelievable, just look at the difference. So, just to put that in perspective for you at home, for a family of three to four people, your carbon footprint from water heating alone is going to be around four to six tons of carbon a year. Just to draw a comparison, that's the equivalent of probably two to three buckets. It's just a staggering amount of carbon being pumped into the atmosphere when you don't need to do it. So, does it matter? Uh, we have warnings of two degrees Celsius, four degrees Celsius. The scientists are saying anything over one and a half is a catastrophe. They're now looking at South Africa and most parts of Africa around four Celsius. It is going to be a catastrophe. And are we already too late? And what can we do? So I just wanted to tell you a quick story that back in 1981, I was an insurance broker in Lloyd's and I was involved in the insurance of uh, rigs, oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico and in other places. And in 1981, a number of the underwriters started declining the risks because they said, James, the ferocity and the frequency of the hurricanes which we are going to envisage and receive over the next decades are going to get worse and worse and worse. And there's this thing going on where the, the atmosphere is heating up and it's changing the weather patterns and things are getting worse. And that stuck with me. And that was nearly 40 years ago. And the whole time we are seeing more droughts, more famines, more disease, more flooding, more rising sea levels, the ice melting, more storms, more poverty, more loss of wildlife, more loss of habitat. And it's up to you and to me, because we can't rely on the politicians. Unfortunately, the most powerful man in the world is a climate change denier. Madness. The evidence is overwhelming. And even if it isn't overwhelming and you are a skeptic, surely we all have an obligation to our children and grandchildren to do what we can to try and keep temperatures down and to reduce our carbon emissions because we're the custodians for our children and grandchildren. And there's a very cute picture of my grandchild or one of my grandchildren. So what's stopping you? We understand that there's a lot to learn and knowledge and education is key. And whether you invest into solar renewable energy through us or somebody else, what's important is that you understand what you're doing. And we really feel that so going solar is actually a social responsibility on all of us, because that's the way we can reduce our carbon footprint so succinctly. So 
We've done a whole lot of educational videos, a number of them which are shown here, which are on uh, Vimeo and also on YouTube, and you can get to the links on our website, and we can send them to you. And they're all quite short, but they are intended to give you an in-depth understanding without being you know, too difficult. So what I recommend, and I'd ask you uh, to do so, is to come and get a quote from us and call or chat to us, visit our website, which has got a lot of information, email us at Ubersola, uh, and be informed and watch more of these videos. And I'd like to thank you. Uh, you can see that I'm excited by solar. I'm frightened by climate change. I think we've got to do everything we possibly can to help future generations. And that means going renewable and reducing our carbon footprints. We may be dead and gone, but the world is still going to be here. And there are going to be people living here. And we need to make it as good as we possibly can. So thank you very much for listening. I look forward to talking to you again in another video on these subjects and hopefully you'll join the renewable move movement to sort of going green. Thank you so much. Bye bye.